Yo, what's up? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Monday, January 11th, 2021. I'm one of your host, Blessing, Addy Oye Jr. Joining me is Tim Ma fucking Gettys. Let's him host, Bless. How you doing? I'm doing good, Tim. How are you doing? I'm fantastic. I'm feeling rejuvenated. We had a huge week last week full of super fun streams. You can watch the highlight stream now over on youtube.com slash kind of funny games that Roger edited. Uh, we started big last week with kind of funny day, 12 hour live stream. That was a lot. That meant yeah. that Sunday, the day before we all had to work and, you know, get everything prepped and ready. So it was a six day week of a lot of stuff. But this weekend it was like, okay, cool. Dude. Let's get in here. Let's like rejuvenate our, our Jews. You know what I mean? rejuvenate our juice yeah no this weekend was much needed because i didn't realize how busy of a week it was until friday hit and i woke up on friday and i was like oh wow i am tired and then i got to Same like thing happened to me yeah later in the day and i was like whoa i'm still tired like i can barely function today and so yeah the weekend was very much needed for that uh you do anything fun for the weekend uh no not really i mean i chilled a lot watched some fun movies played a lot of hades uh, so you oh. know what i guess yeah i take it back it was quite yeah. a fun weekend what'd you watch <laughs> Uh, watched John Wick for in review. Um, nice. watched a movie called Detention. Okay, that is directed by Joseph Kahn, and I'm gonna just recommend everyone out there: do not watch a trailer for this movie. Watch the movie and know that it is horrible. It is a horrible movie, but by the end of it, I'm like, is this the best thing I've ever seen? And I'm still at a loss oh. with myself where I'm like, I don't know. It's so fucking weird. But again, the less you know, the better. And it's not good. I'm not recommending it as a, hey, guys, this is the best thing ever. Yeah, I'm recommending it as a masterpiece. This might change your life. I don't know. <laughs> I just don't know. Interesting. I'm going to add that to my queue because I've been looking for things to watch. I've been like doing that thing where I scroll on Netflix and I just like watch trailer after trailer. And I'm like, I'm going to watch one of these things. And then like 10 minutes later, I, I just pop off because nothing yeah. fascinates me. That sounds interesting. Detention. I might it's, give it a go. You should. It's fucking bonkers as shit. And then you should watch Bodied, which is the battle rap movie they made a couple years back. And oh. that's legitimately amazing. But okay. they have very similar styles. Interesting. Well, well, Tim, enough about that. Let's talk mm -hmm. about Star Wars games getting a new Whoa. look. New Gotham Knights details and more because this is Kind of Funny Games Daily each and every weekday at 10 a.m. live right here on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. We run you through the nerdy news you need to know about. If you're watching live, you can correct us when we get stuff wrong by going to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. If you don't want to watch live, you can watch later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games, roosteeth.com, or you can listen later on podcast services around the globe by searching for Kind of Funny Games Daily. To be a part of the show at the patreon.com slash kind of funny games or bronze members or above get to write in and silver members or above get the show ad free with the exclusive daily post show housekeeping for you uh for some reason this wednesday at 9 p.m pacific time we're doing a signs watch along party it'll be my Jesus first time Christ. watching signs <laughs> uh if all you need to do if you want to join in uh, is have amazon prime uh you can come and hang out with us on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games i have no idea how i convinced uh how, or how greg miller and Nick Scarpino, I guess, convinced me to do this. Because all it took was me saying I've not watched Signs for us to, like, organize this thing. Yeah, that's how kind of funny works, man. Especially when Greg Miller's involved. Something is said, the next thing you know, there's a t-shirt four months late. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'm looking forward to uh, that. I'm very excited. It's, uh, what's his face's birthday? Nicholas Scarpino's birthday. It is Nick's birthday. There's it no is. better to celebrate Nick's 41st birthday than watching the M. Night Shyamalan classic, Signs. It means Signs a lot to him, Tim. It means a lot to him. At 9 p.m. Pacific time. <laughs> Very much looking forward to it. Uh, thank you to our Patreon producers, uh, our producer, Blackjack. Today we're brought to you by Hims, Brooklinen, and Burrow. But I'll tell you about that later. For now, let's begin with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. Starting with our number one, Tim. Mm -hmm. What's next for Star Wars video games? Uh, the reason I want to know. Lightsabers. The reason I ask is because what was that, Kevin? I yelled lightsabers. lightsabers. <laughs> oh, lightsabers. I mean, that's a good guess. Yeah. Uh, the reason I ask is because this morning. Lucasfilm, or another, uh, uh, I, I guess Disney, like uh, this morning on StarWars.com, a blog post went up uh, <laughs> titled Lucasfilm Games Begins a New Era. Uh, Kevin, I have a sizzle reel here, here that you can pull up as I read through. 
The blog post reads like this. Lucasfilm's legacy in gaming stretches back decades, and with Lucasfilm in the galaxy far, far away, entering a new and unprecedented phase of creativity, so will the world of Lucasfilm games, developed in collaboration with the finest studios across the industry. StarWars.com is thrilled to reveal that Lucasfilm Games is now the official identity for all gaming titles from Lucasfilm, a name that encompasses the company's rich catalog of video games and its eye toward the future. You can watch a special sizzle reel uh, celebrating the history of games from Lucasfilm below, which should be playing right now. The Lucasfilm Games logo featured above will appear in all featured Lucasfilm Games titles. Tim, motherfucking Gettys, mm -hmm. what is your reaction to this? Very excited. I feel like any type of, uh, you know, at least care put into creating an, an umbrella for these properties to, to fall under, I think is a good thing. I think it, it's shown a lot of success with Marvel Games being able to branch out and collaborate with a bunch of different developers on a project by project basis you know the ea deal uh with with disney for star wars games has been a, a bumpy road to say the least um it's crazy to think back to the you know ps2 era of getting multiple star wars games a year of varying quality you know i don't think we ever got anything on the the level of a jedi fallen order but there was a lot of fun games that are very near and dear to people's hearts before that obviously on pc back when it was lucas arts we got classic after classic after classic right uh throughout the 90s uh and early 2000s so i'm excited for a world with star wars games because i think star wars lends itself to so many different types of gameplay experiences that can be fulfilling whether it's narrative driven single player things or lightsaber focused action games or squadron style uh flight sims whether that's arcadey or more sim based like there's just so many options out there for what a star wars game can be on top of the you know more kid-friendly fare like the the lego games um so i'm never going to say no to more star wars games hopefully with the idea that they are good and quality and i think that being able to branch out with other developers is going to allow that what this means for the ea deal and how all that goes i don't know i don't remember exactly how many years we are into it now yeah i think, I think it, it ends in 2023 Okay, so I think this is just good to kind of get ahead of that, you know, start getting branding down now so that by the time that actually becomes a thing, we're firing on all cylinders. You know, Marvel Games, when they announced that they were kind of like creating their own thing and like labeling it, uh, that was back in 2015 when Age of Ultron came out. And I remember Greg and I got to go to see Age of Ultron early because it was we were at the Marvel Games announcement. And they announced a couple games, some of the Telltale collaborations and some other things. But it, that announcement really kind of felt like this, where it was like, all right, this doesn't really mean much right now. But hopefully in a couple of years, it means something really good. And in the case of Marvel Games, look where we're at now, right? That, yeah. that meant Spider-Man, that meant Miles Morales, and, you know, hopefully many more surprises along the way. Yeah, I think this is really exciting because this, of course, signals that they're they're thinking about the future of Star Wars games and what that looks like. And Star Wars games historically have been awesome, right? Like I think back to Star Wars Battlefront Two and how much fun I had with that. I think to the Star Wars Force Unleashed games. I think to uh, even Star Wars Demolition on PS One that I feel like barely anybody played, but I that, played. Was that the really Twisted dug. Metal ripoff? Yes, it was. <laughs> Good lord, I had a demo of that. Dude, I had, my, I had a, uh, one of my friends that lived in my neighborhood. I used to go to his house all the time and play games. He had that game. And I was always obsessed with it because you could just choose between, like, different Star Wars vehicles. I mean, it's Twisted Metal, right? So you're choosing between different Star Wars vehicles and making them battle it out. And if my memory serves correct, one of your choices were uh, was uh, 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 Boba Fett. And, like, mm -hmm. just, like, Boba Fett in a jetpack jet fighting against different vehicles, which always struck me as, like, ridiculous, but awesome and fun uh and so yeah like i'm all about that i think that sounds cool um do, do you think this signals that they may be thinking about ending that ea deal because in the in the sizzle reel oh kevin's showing off a uh, star wars demolition right here i used to love this game man i don't know if it was i don't know if it was necessarily a good game but it's one of those know, games that like, i think back it was and not it's definitely it. not yeah, but no, fun, I, I agree yeah. with you. I, yeah, no, I loved Star Wars games just because it's fucking Star Wars. Like, even Masters of Terracasi, the freaking fighting game on PS1, like, I rented that thing like six times. It's horrible. But you they're get to fun. Fight yeah, Luke like, motherfucking Skywalker. Like, that's all anybody wants. Fantasy fulfillment. Arguably, like, for, for me personally, right? I'm not, I'm not the hugest Star Wars movie person. If anything, I probably like Star Wars games more than I like Star Wars movies. Mm -hmm. And. 
I'm like, I'm very excited for this. And back to my question, right? Do you think this signals them possibly ending that EA partnership? Sorry, you, you were bringing up some evidence of that. You're saying that in the sizzle reel something in the well in this in the sizzle reel like it was they they showed off the last i guess generation of star wars games right and it's been stuff that it's stuff that you'd expect like being the ea titles and so they showed off battlefront they showed off uh uh squadrons they showed off uh star wars jedi fallen order but in there also you also had the star wars stuff from fortnite uh and lego star wars and star wars stuff in sims mm-hmm. uh and i think in sims of course ea title but it seems like them them creating this new umbrella that is Lucasfilm Games feels like them trying to separate themselves from just being EA in a way where, unless you were doing something that was dynamically different or doing something special with the with the uh, Star Wars games lineup in the coming years, feels like it's a pointless thing to do, right? Like if you if 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 Star Wars is going to live under EA for the most part, what's the point of doing this? Uh, I mean, I think it, there's it's multi-legged here where i think where on one side of it it is just the branding of wanting to own it of even if it's ea wanting or ea you know owning the license or at least having the license to be able to make these games it's still a disney property so disney still is going to want to say no actually it's ours in the same way that marvel studios is under disney you know it's like they just want to be able to categorize what's happening even if it is different production studios or whatever working on the different films i think that translates similarly to video games where even if it is EA making it all, like Marvel, or in the case of this, Disney, want to be able to say, no, 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 like this is a, a Lucasfilm Games joint, right? It's mm-hmm. just it's a collaboration with EA, even if EA is the only group that's able to make the games. Because from there, you know, there's always the weird, like, question marks, like things like the Fortnite partnership or Lego games, which aren't EA, but they're clearly making Star Wars games, Yeah, right? So I think that it's a smart move for them to just kind of be able to have this umbrella to point to and just have the flashy little logo before games start, right? Like PlayStation Studios adding that um, in the last you know, year, year or whatever so that we're seeing that. It's like that, that means something now. Like the world has kind of changed when it uh, comes to those type of logos where, and I think a lot of it goes back to Marvel Studios where people can understand that they see that flashy animation opening up marvel studios movies and no matter what the franchise is people understand okay cool it's part of this continuity whereas i think that that didn't really exist too much before even on the video game side of things i think we're a little used to it where it's like you see the konami logo and you're like okay cool that that can kind of mean something when you see a ubisoft logo nowadays it means something even more where it's like you know what a ubisoft game is because they've built the kind of library of games to to have similarities between them that the Ubisoft logo means something. And I think that PlayStation Studios has done that in a very different way. Uh, it, it, it means like a stamp of quality. And I think when it comes to Lucasfilm's games here, they are trying to set up that same expectation of quality that one day, hopefully sooner than later, uh, they are going to be firing all cylinders. And I I expect that they are going to want to continue the the Jedi franchise. So Jedi oh, colon sure. after Fallen yeah. Order, whatever it is. Um, but then on top of that, I would love to see like what what do some other options look like? You know, like what when they can get out of the grasp of only working with EA, what does that look like? Like who are they partnering with? Does that mean console exclusive games? Does that mean uh, you know something that's multi platform but working with a Ubisoft on something for a Ubisoft style game? I don't know, but I think it's exciting. I think we've seen what EA has been able to do with Star Wars and. Uh, over the last 10 years, for better or worse. And again, I'm not just trying to shit on them because they've made a lot of bad decisions, but they've also made a lot of really quality things. Um, And some things that are, you know, kind of people love or hate uh, different elements of like Battlefront 2, right? So I'm interested to see it move on because I think that we've kind of exhausted our options at EA for now. Yeah. And like I I think I foresee the EA deal continuing in... uh, partially like i could i could see them being like all right i could see disney and lucasfilm games being like okay you guys did a great job with jedi fallen order for the most part we want to see more of this you guys did a good job with squadrons if you guys want to continue to nourish this continue right but we also Mm -hmm. want to check out other companies other studios to see what they can do to see how we can expand the brand further beyond just ea uh that's my prediction again we shall see very exciting stuff very exciting future for star wars uh speaking of games have very exciting future story number two wb has entirely redesigned gotham knight's combat for co-op 
Uh, this comes from Vicky Blake at Eurogamer. WB Games Montreal, the studio behind the upcoming Batman game, Gotham Knights, has confirmed the team has entirely redesigned the combat system to improve the co-op experience. Gotham Knights is an open-world, single-player, and co-op action role-playing game starring playable ba Batgirl, Nightwing, Red Hood, and Robin. The setup is the quartet must protect Gotham following the supposed death of Bruce Wayne. Quote, We have entirely redesigned the combat system in order for it to work well in co-op. Flair Marty, executive producer of Gotham Knights, told Games Radar. Of course, we're still a brawler, and some of the mechanics won't feel totally alien for people who played and enjoyed the, Gar the Arkham series, but it is in many ways very different. Since the story progression is shared between all characters, it also makes sense that you, that you don't have to level up from, from scratch every time you want to switch. It also stays very coherent in terms of our narrative, Marty said. Quote, since the other members of the Batman family are always present in some way in the background while you're, while you're out in the world uh, fighting crime or unraveling the mystery, they don't stay inactive. So it makes sense that they are also progressing and getting stronger, end quote. Tim, what are your hype levels for Gotham Knights? Uh, my hype levels are through the roof for Barrett. For oh, me, yeah. it's more like I'm interested to see where this goes. But, yeah. you know, it's definitely not something that I'm like super, super stoked on. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, sad boy Barrett. Barrett Courtney has entered the chat. What's up, Barrett? Prepping. Give him a sec. Nice. <laughs> he's, there it is. He's muted. What is it? Oh, yeah. I had to, I had to change some settings. What's up, y'all? I hear you talking about uh, Batman. Yeah, we are. Did you see the news story? Yeah, people were tweeting at me, freaking out about it. Like, ah, it's the end of the world. They're changing things from Arkham. And it's like, I from the reveal, the gameplay reveal for Gotham Knights, it was like, kind of obvious that they're they're changing a lot and uh yeah i i like i'm excited i like any sort of way because i want to see what w montreal wb montreal can do uh with the batman license like on their own and not feel the need to be connected to a universe that a different developer created so um, now i got a question here bear mm -hmm. i want to ask you from the nanobiologist who writes mm -hmm. in a patreon.com slash kind of funny games just like you can and says Hi, Blessed and Imran, or uh, I guess it should be <laughs> Hi, Blessed and Tim, and now Barrett. I'm adding all these names in here. Cool. Hope you both had you a nice weekend. Me. Hi, Blessed, no. Tim, Barrett, and uh, Kevin. Thanks. Hope you all had a, ni <laughs> <laughs> a nice weekend. <laughs> I'm loving you to think of but, Kevin's uh, name. <laughs> <laughs> Over the past, there's a lot of names. Over the past couple of days, we got a little more info about Gotham Knights uh, that seems pretty good for the most part. For instance, progress will carry over between characters, so you never, so you're never under leveled. Combat, is is, combat is still brawler based, but combat is also heavily influenced by the game's emphasis on co-op. Is it just me, or is it worrying that this game will feature uh, co-op in a way that is affecting the biggest part of the game? While in the past, we've had some two-person fights with AI being dot, 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 competent, dot, 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 but with abilities added, do you think it may get too chaotic without any coordination, or fights get harder because your AI companion is standing in a corner punching a fire extinguisher while you fight Mr. Freeze? Best nanobiologist. Barrett, are you fearful at all that the combat won't be as good as the previous Arkham games? <laughs> I think they need a change up. I don't know like uh, what they'll do with this combat to make it feel distinguished and stuff, but I think we need to we need a change up from the Arkham games. And that's what this game is. It's not supposed to be part it's not supposed to be an Arkham game. And I think that's what people are like trying to attach themselves to like way too fucking much. We need to let go. Whatever they do with Suicide Squad, like Rock City is saying Suicide Squad's part of the Arkhamverse, whatever they do with there, that'll that'll be like your kind of return, maybe that might be a first person shooter it might be a third person shooter who the fuck knows we need to let go of the arkham combat it's great i love the arkham series it's my favorite like video game like overall video game series but like we need to fucking move on and like get something different and with like the whole like it's being developed specifically for co-op i think it's just like they needed to rework it to have co-op make sense i don't know like if like I don't know if like single player uh, gameplay is going to be lessened just because they had to change things up for co-op in mind, you know, um, mm -hmm. I, I don't think that's necessarily like a, a doomsday fucking thing, which, which is like several people tweeted at me this morning be like, ah, we need to be worried. We do, this game's going to like be bad now. It's like, no, nah, man, like let WB yeah. Montreal take their fucking shot. Stop. Stop attaching yourself so much to the Arkham games. It's time to move on, y'all. Yeah, I 100% agree. If any, like, if anything, this is more exciting news because this means that they are thinking heavily about what co-op looks like for this franchise. I'm very much with the the quote from a, a movie that Barrett really likes. 
uh, where uh, they say, mm. let the past die. Kill yeah, it if you God. have to. I hear you really like that movie, too, Blessing. I think it's cool. I don't yeah, hate you're it. Liar. You're a liar. I, I, I think it's Roger fine. really likes that movie, too. Roger really likes that movie. Yeah, yeah but like, I he's, think, he's, I think a little, all he's a child. He's very young. Mm. Like he, he hasn't learned. Mm. Once he becomes older, mm. he'll rewatch and be like, Ugh, It's definitely trash. better than Rise of Skywalker. Piece of trash. I mean, yeah. oh, I don't God. know if any of that. Anyways, this to me is almost <laughs> non-news, but it's yeah. like I, I, I don't, I don't think there's any reason to be up in uh, a tizzy about it all. Like I think exactly. it's good news that they're focusing on it being co-op because it clearly looks like a co-op experience, and yeah, uh, I think it would be a major bummer if it didn't work well in co-op. So the fact that they're actually like, nope, this is co-op, and mm -hmm. that's how the gameplay is backing up the story. The story backs up the gameplay with co-op in mind great yeah that gives this the biggest chance of success yeah and exactly yeah. and like a, a, like i was saying like i felt like we kind of inferred a lot of this from the gameplay reveal back at uh wb uh the nug dome whatever the fuck they called it um yeah like we <laughs> yeah. we pulled a lot of the that context there and so it's like a lot of this is like the one actual piece of news is that you can actually switch between characters throughout the game and not have to like re-level everybody which is what i was hoping for because a lot of people are like oh who are you gonna man i was like i honestly like want to like swap between all of the characters and like play hot like who, yeah and like play like who makes sense for like hot in the moment Barrett, hot shit. swap courtney that's what they call yeah. it exactly All right, i just want i want the feature from gta 5 where when you swap between a character they like zoom out in the city and then they move God, it that took so fucking in. long though but i guess we do have like more. we have the ssd now yeah that's true back in yeah 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 all right very exciting well talk to you the later. most exciting thing is that uh thanks to your support on patreon.com slash kind of funny uh barrett will be doing a uh, a video essay series on the arkham games leading into the mm -hmm. release of gotham knights one mm -hmm. video essay <sighs> per game yeah so that's very exciting stuff yeah. stay tuned for that bear courtney thank you so much i appreciate you bye 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 story number three the cyberpunk hits keep coming uh a, po a polish competition watchdog is investigating cd project uh this is marie dale alessandri at gamesindustry.biz Cyberpunk 2077 developer CD Projekt Red is being investigated by Poland's Office of Competition and Consumer Protection. The news was initially reported by a Polish business newspaper with a spokesperson saying that the organization approached CD Projekt Red to understand the issues with the game and what actions had been taken to fix them. Quote, We'll check how the manufacturer is working on the introduction of amendments or solutions uh, to difficulties preventing the game to work on different consoles, but also how it intends to act in, re in, in relation to the persons who filed complaints and are dissatisfied with the purchase due to the inability to play games on owned equipment despite previous assurances that it would, end quote. Should it be found that CD Projekt Red has been indeed misleading uh, in the run up to the dis disastrous launch of Cyberpunk 2077 and has not made enough effort to fix the problems now that it is out, Poland's Office of Competition and Con Consumer Protection can fine the studio up to 10% of its annual income and or impose refunds. Cyberpunk 2077 launched in December and has been widely criticized for its bugs on PS4 and Xbox One. The game was delisted from PlayStation Store a week after launch, while Microsoft offered full refunds to those who purchased the game on its store. Other retailers offered similar refund options. CD Projekt Red is also facing a class action lawsuit claiming that the studio lied to its investors about the state of the game on PS4 and Xbox One. Tim, can you believe it's been like about a month since Cyberpunk 2077 came out? There's a lot of things that I, I can't believe. When it comes to to Cyberpunk 2077, it being a month for release, yeah, can't believe that. I can't believe that the launch was, as they say here, disastrous. To think back, even a year ago, to imagine that the launch of a CD Projekt Red game would be disastrous, let alone to this level, it would have been unfathomable. But here we are, and it just keeps getting worse. And damn right, get after them, Watchdog. Let's figure this shit out. Let's get to the bottom of this. Someone, they need to be held accountable. The, the top yeah. of CD Projekt Red needs to be held accountable for the laundry list of grievances that people have with them for all of the, the mistakes that they made, uh, least of which being just the launch of this game. So, yeah, let's see. Yeah. Uh, these new stories aren't going to stop. Yeah, that's the thing that sucks is like, I think it was weeks ago, or it might have been the week before we went on break where... There was, a, there was some CD Projekt Red news story because that was the week where, where every day was CD Projekt Red news stories. And I hit the point where I was like, dude, I am tired about talk. I'm tired of talking about uh, CD Projekt Red. Like we hit that point very quickly and we're still at the point where these news stories aren't going to stop because it's 
one of the most disastrous AAA launches that I can remember, like for for as long as I've been paying attention to video games, uh, this seems this might be maybe the worst one. Honestly. No, this is uh, undeniably this is yeah. the worst one. And it's like and because- it, it, it's heightened by the fact that the game itself isn't like completely terrible. You know, if the if the game came out and it was overall just a bad game, that'd be one thing. The fact that it is a game that is very good in a lot of aspects, but then just completely unfinished in others, and uh, you know, has issue ha- has issues from uh, across the board. It's so it's so strange, and yeah, like this is a this is such an unnecessary launch. Uh, yeah, entirely, and I think that it, it's really not even just about the quality of the game. Obviously, it goes way deeper than that. Like this reminds me a lot of Wonder Woman 1984, and at least personally, my opinions on it, which are. Is it a worse movie than something like a Suicide Squad? No, it's not. Obviously, Suicide Squad is trash. Wonder Woman 1984, very bad. But, like, it's a different level, right? But the thing is, Wonder Woman 1984 is a bigger disappointment because there was expectations. Mm -hmm. Because we knew what that team was capable of. We knew that cast looked like a a stellar lineup of people that we want to see do fun things. And it was what it was, which is extra disappointing. And I think that's the same thing with Cyberpunk, where... It was expected to be a 10, you know? Oh, yeah. So it's like game quality alone, it didn't live up to the hype. You add on all this other shit on top of it, and it's just like, oh, my God, this is a disaster. Whereas, like, Anthem was kind of the thing where, like, it was all talk, and it ended up not being able to live up to it. I feel like nobody was, like, looking at that in the same way they were looking at, at Cyberpunk of, holy shit, this is going to be a potential game of the generation contender yeah right? i mean this is the follow-up to the witcher 3 and the witcher 3 is a game Period. that a lot of people will put up there as game of the mm-hmm. generation and to go from that like a game that defined that year a game that for many ways like redefined how people would judge and look at rpgs like if you think about 2015 in the year that the witcher 3 came out the the other games that were coming out that year were fallout 4 Metal Gear solid 5 um uh i don't know why mad max came to mind i think th- i just associate that with Metal Gear Solid five but like you know big open world games came out that year and witcher th- witcher 3 was the one that came through and really defined like oh wait we can have a huge very well written open world rpg that isn't bogged down by tons of bugs obviously there were bugs in the witcher 3 but like not in the way that we're used to from bethesda games or cyberpunk 2077 uh and so for this to be the follow-up to that just it's crazy crazy in each and every way um Mm -hmm. but yeah i'm i i guess my my last question to 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 you before i even uh move on to the next story is what do you think the next step for cd project red is aside from just fixing the bugs because we all we obviously know that that's the thing right they're doing right now is hot patching aside from that what's the next step for them i couldn't tell you man like i i think that this is uh so far gone that yeah fixing the game is a a huge step one but i don't know i don't know like no man's sky uh i see people in the chat bringing up this is such a different situation than no man's sky like this is the follow-up to witcher 3 and this is cd project red in 2021 where there is a much more critical eye on on studios and developers and conversation around things like crunch and things like you know the toxicity in a workplace and CD Projekt Red have a lot of things to kind of figure out and and fix that go so far beyond just the game. Uh, But they have to do all that in addition to fixing the game. So they they have a very tall order in front of them. And I don't really expect this to go too well for them in the coming months. I think it's going to take a while for them to turn things around. And I do think it's going to take some real house clearing out to be able to make those steps forward in, in a way that actually feels substantial and and motivated by good we shall see story number four uh and some good news awesome games done quick 2021 raised 2.75 million dollars uh this is another one from marie de alessandri at gamesindustry.biz charity speedrunning showcase awesome games done quick 2021 raised over 2.75 million dollars for uh, for the prevent cancer foundation the event ran from january 3rd to january 10th and was broadcasted on twitch for the first time, AGDQ was fully digital, with runners streaming from home due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Summer Games Done Quick was also organized fully online back in August. The event then raised $2.3 million for Doctors Without Borders. 
Last year, the organization also put together an event to help health workers responding to the COVID-19 crisis, raising over $400,000 for direct relief. Since its, since its inception in 2010, Games Done Quick has raised over $31 million for charities worldwide. Very exciting stuff. Tim, uh, I think it was Friday that you sent me over a clip of a dude run, speed running Mario 64. And I clicked the link and I started watching and I was like, okay, cool. This dude speed running Mario 64. And then I looked closer and I realized that he was blindfolded. <laughs> Kevin, please bring up the clip. First off, game's done quick. Fan fantastic group of people doing awesome so charity work and it is just so fun to see it just changes the way you look at video games we've worked with them before back in the day uh on a, a sony santa monica thing with the god of war partnership uh when they announced the god of war 3 remastered but um it was great meeting those guys and watching the stuff watching games you know and love get broken is so fascinating it's but so, i watched so this entire fucking stream bless and i had my mind blown kev prepare to get your mind blown you can see this man playing Mario 64. The TV is behind him that he is playing on. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. And oh, on top awesome. of that, scroll this forward, Kev. Is this the same dude you sent me with the with the blindfold mm -hmm. or is this? Yeah, it is. Okay. Anywhere, yeah. Oh, there it is. He's blindfolded. Is he just playing it off sound? Him. Yeah, he's playing, so, so the fascinating thing is he's playing it off sound, but then there's the, there will be certain points where he kind of has to like recalibrate where he's at, and so he'll know he'll know enough where where he's at in the level to then run up to a wall and then punch the wall, and then from there he knows exactly where he's at. And so like you yeah. saw just then where he he landed in the cage, yeah. went up against the wall, punched the cage, so he went back like you know two inches, and then hopped and got the star. It's insane. Like you'll see him walk against a wall, stand there, and start punching. And like it's like rhythmic for him where he's just like okay one two three four and then he'll turn and then run and get the star and it's like holy hell man absolutely insane everyone go go check it out yeah uh, it was one of the coolest video game things i have ever seen in my life and i don't understand it like i still don't get it like does he just memorize all of this well dude i was talking to uh roger picorni our new hire video editor oh um because we we're both we we're both watching this together and I think the the thing that I imagine, like I think I I think what he does is he has to open, like start a level, right? He like he he opens up the level that he wants to master. He then has to like like run in run in a direction. I'm sure he has like save states or whatever. So he runs in a direction, loads the, loads the state, closes his eyes, does it again, loads the state, does it again, makes sure that he makes sure that that route is good, and then he does the same thing with the next part of the level, and he just does that over and over again. You ha you'd have to imagine. And that must take him like a long time. That seems Kevin, really, really difficult. Go, What's up? go to twelve eighteen in the video. We're Tim, there. if if somebody taxed you with doing this exact thing, speed running Mario sixty four blindfolded, how long do you think it'd take you? Never. Four or if five you did this full time, four or five. It's months. impossible. Here's the thing: I grew up oh my, my entire life. Yeah, my entire life I've played Mario sixty four, and this level every once in a while I fall off. Dude, you know? I, I still fall off all the time. That's, on that's what I'm saying. And it's just like, this motherfucker's doing it blind. Folded. God, you got to love it. Very gotta impressive. Of course, it, you can find, uh, I believe you can find the videos from Awesome Games Done Quick on YouTube. I believe they have a YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Kevin, is that what you're playing off of? Their yep. YouTube channel? Games Done Quick. Cool. This so is if you want to catch up on the Games Done Quick stuff, oh, go over there, youtube.com slash games done quick. Story number five, speaking of good stuff, uh, Ghost of Tsushima fans help with real-life Tsushima Island repairs. This is Jordan Alleman at IGN. Ghost of Tsushima fans helped contribute to the, re to the restoration of a real-life Tori gate on the Japanese island of Tsushima. As reported by Silicon Era, uh, the crowdfunding project to restore the gate at, wa at uh, Watasumi Shrine ended on January 10th, amassing over 27 million yen. According to an article from Famitsu, many of many Ghost of Tsushima fans rallied behind the funding drive, and in the end, it managed to achieve 542% of the initial 5 million yen target. The Watatsumi Shrine uh, gate had been partially destroyed by a typhoon in September 2020, and repairs should begin in April 2021, although pandemic-related delays could slow that process. There you go. Video games, go. force yeah. for good. Hell yeah. Who would have imagined? Awesome stuff. Very awesome stuff. Before I get into our last news story, I want to tell you about our sponsor. Of course, you can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny games where you can get the show ad free. And speaking of ads, this episode of kind of funny games daily is brought to you by hymns. 
4hims.com is all about men's wellness. We all know the story well. Andy and Nick wanted to maintain their own wellness, so they looked to hims for help keeping their hair full and healthy. We can confirm they've been loving it ever since. Through hims, you can get the prescription medication that treats erectile dysfunction. Real science, real solutions to ED. Hims makes it easy. Hims connects you to, uh, with a licensed medical professional online who can prescribe FDA-approved prescription medication to treat erectile dysfunction. You get the same active ingredient as that expensive little pill, but without the expensive price tag. This could cost you hundreds of bucks if you had to go through a doctor or pharmacy. Not so with Hims. Hims makes it simple and affordable. No embarrassing conversations, no expensive appointments. Just answer a few questions online about your medical history, and a provider will confidentially review. If approved, your medication is shipped directly to your door in discreet packaging, and shipping is free. No more searching online for answers to questions about ED or sexual wellness. Just go to your 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 Hims account uh, and ask a medical professional you can trust. Why live with ED when the solution can be so simple? Try Hims today by starting out with a free online visit. Go to forhims.com/funnygames for your free visit. That's forhims.com/funnygames. Forhims.com. That's F O R. HIMS.com slash funny games. Uh, prescription products are subject to medical provider approval and require an online consultation with the medical provider who will determine if the prescription is appropriate. See website for full details and safety information. Remember, that's forhims.com slash funny games. We're also brought to you by Brooke Linen. Life is too short to sleep between anything less than really nice sheets. But maybe you looked at some retailers and calculated the years of interest you'd pay on just one set and gave up. Trust me, go check out Brooklinen. Brooklinen was started by Rich and Vicky, who also tried to find beautiful home essentials that didn't cost them an arm and a leg. And when they couldn't, they found they founded Brooklinen as the first direct-to-consumer bedding company. They work directly with manufacturers to make luxury available directly to you without the luxury level markups. Brooklinen has a variety of sheets, colors, patterns, and materials to fit your needs and tastes. Brooklinen has over 50,000 five stars five-star reviews and counting and is so confident in their product that all their bedding comes without uh, comes with a lifetime warranty and brooklyn is so much more than sheets they've got comforters pillows towels even loungewear and more you can buy sheets bedding and pillows all at once and save even more kind of funny loves brooklyn uh tim gets the sheets that match his room uh and greg loves his towel and uh, how it covers his shame it's 2021. <laughs> do something nice for yourself to start the new year. To help, uh, to help you do that, Brooklinen has a special offer. Go to brooklinen.com and use promo code GAMES to get $25 off when you spend $100 or more, plus free shipping. That's B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com and enter promo code GAMES to get $25 off when you spend $100 or more, plus free shipping. Brooklinen.com, use promo code GAMES at checkout. Blessings. Or lastly, what's up? Before we move on, there's a new story that's coming out right now. Oh, boy. And I got to say, I'm really enjoying it. This comes from Gamatsu. Oh. Thank you, chat, for pointing this out. Square Enix trademarks Ever Crisis, The First Soldier, Wait. and Shinra logo was in it? Japan. Was that all the ads? Oh. No, we got one more ad. Oh, my bad. Oh, you're good. You're good. You're good. We're back to uh, the ads, baby. <laughs> well, yeah, let me tell you about Burrow real quick. We're going to talk about that because that sounds exciting. Uh, last year, we brought to you by Burrow. Uh, I can't stand shopping for furniture, the options, the transporting, the building. It's all frustrating. That's why I'm excited to tell you that KFGD is supported by Burrow, the furniture company that's designing smarter, simpler things for modern life at home. They built the company from the ground up to fix all the ways that shopping for furniture is frustrating. Every decision they make, from the first sketch of a new couch to the fast, free delivery uh, promise, is made with your experience in mind. Burrow provides easy online shopping, no more visits to far-flung warehouse stores, no high-pressure sales uh, people. Plus, Burrow's world-class support team is available for you whenever you need. It's furniture designed for the way you live. The credenzas are actually tall enough to fit next-gen consoles standing vertically. The award-winning Nomad Sofa has, has a built-in USB charger. Assembly is simple. Burrow customers literally write reviews applauding the instructions for being so easy to follow. Modular design means they're easy to set up and, or but also easy to take with you to your next home. Uh, and there's fast, free shipping on every order. Burrow saves users an average of $100 on large items like a couch. Right now, you can get $75 off your first order at burrow.com slash games. That's burrow, B-U-R-R-O-W dot com slash games or $75 off your Burrow purchase. Burrow.com slash games. Tim Geddes, tell me about what's going on with Square Enix. For the first time ever, 
I want to tell you this news that is breaking now. Square Enix trademarks Ever Crisis, the first soldier, and Shinra logo in Japan. Square Enix filed trademarks for these on December 17th, 2020, as well as the Shinra Electric Power Company logo on December 22nd. All three trademarks were just made public today. Uh, they all seem related to Square Enix's Final Fantasy VII series. Ever Crisis shares a similar name to the 2004 release mobile game Before Crisis and 2007 release PSP game Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII. The first soldier may be a reference to Sephiroth, the main villain of Final Fantasy VII, and the Shinra Electric Power Company is an organization in the world of Final Fantasy VII. Uh, pretty excited about all this stuff because I love my boy Zach Fair. And if we got some type of Crisis Core remake in the Final Fantasy VII remake... I wouldn't be mad. In fact, what, what, Wes, I'd be quite happy. What are what's the likelihood that this is that as opposed to a mobile game? I I think it's pretty likely. Yeah. I think it's pretty likely. Yeah. Ever Crisis to me reads more Crisis Core than it does before Crisis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which is just a lot of silly words. I love yeah, Square. I barely People understand. Are what you just said, look, but that's exciting. People are looking tell me to look at Square's uh Twitter. So I'm gonna do that. Oh. We're going on an archaeological dig right now for Final Fantasy VII details. I'm very excited for Final Fantasy VII Remake Part Two or whatever they call it. So Square Enix just tweeted. Okay, Kev, I'm going to have to send you this because we're going to need to figure out what the hell this means uh -oh. together as a team. All right, I'm looking now to you because okay. I, I want to know what this is. It looks like Square Enix is thinking about cloud. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, oh okay oh okay which is weird <laughs> it's a weird thing to do weird thing to mm -hmm. say could just be nothing could just be cute but this tied in with the timing of right when the people started reporting on the, the final fantasy trademarks kind of mm -hmm. interesting anyways oh. either way very exciting for me because i want some more very final fantasy 7 stuff and i really love zach so i want more from him for sure yeah it sounds really cool. Keep an eye out for that, everybody. We'll probably get more news on that in the coming days, weeks, months, maybe. If this who is knows? like a God Who point. knows? At some point, we'll get more news on this. Fingers crossed, maybe. Our last news story, uh, story number six. The new Pulse Red Xbox controller looks hot. Uh, Kevin, I have a link for you to pull up so you can show everybody how hot this controller looks. Um, uh, it's a, basically a red Xbox controller. <laughs> but it's so much more than that. It is a perfect red Xbox controller. Yeah. Like every once in a while, somebody like has a color and you look at it and it just makes you go, oh, and I'm not a red fan, but damn, this shit got me going. Yeah. For audio listeners, right? Like the controller itself is red, but then also the analog sticks are just pure red. And then you got the black buttons, but then the uh, actual letters within the buttons also red. The, the middle buttons being the, the select button, the start button and the share button. I know that's not what they're called, uh, but also red. It's a pure red controller, and it looks hot. I'm all yeah. about it. Yeah. It is a nice, nice controller, man. Good for them. Yeah. Out of curiosity, uh, this when I saw this this morning, it reminded me of Xbox Design Labs. And mm -hmm. I was wondering if they still were doing Design Labs. And I looked over at the Design Labs website, and it says that um, it'll be back in 2021. And so you'd mm -hmm. imagine, theoretically, they're adding in support for the new Xbox Series X controllers. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I imagine and exclusively I am... when they relaunch, it'll be only those controllers. Oh, yeah. And I am very hyped for whenever that mm -hmm. happens because I never, I never, uh, the, the design labs train when it originally came through because I got my Xbox one late. And by that time I was still barely playing games on my Xbox one. Um, and now that I have an Xbox series X and now that I have a whole generation to look forward to of games on the Xbox series X. Oh boy. Mm -hmm. the design labs controller would fit right, uh, nicely in my mm -hmm. entertainment center being mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this small thing over here. I love Pretty much looking forward to that. Uh, Tim. I'm really excited for when Design Labs comes back, but that might be so far away. If I want to know what's coming out to Mom Drop Shops today, where would I look? The official list of upcoming software across each and every platform as listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily show host each and every weekday. Got a little trill on his voice. Yeah, I like it. He sounds like a fly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all around. I out hate today, that. <laughs> out today we got Wrestling Empire on Switch, Arkanoid Breakout on Switch. Kevin, can you look up Arkanoid Breakout because I have to know if that's exactly what it sounds like. Yeah, uh, no, Top no. Gun Air Combat for Switch, Radio Commander for Switch. Ooh, this is an interesting one. You, you, Yumemir, Yumemirdwa 
nostalgia for Switch. Fucking you nailed it, dude. Do you think I, do you think I you nailed, nailed that? You for sure. You mirrored <laughs> nostalgia for yeah, Switch. Yeah, I'll give you it. Uh, Grand Prix, Grand Prix Racing for Switch. Operation Citadel. Also, Operation Citadel is now available on PC, Mac, and Linux. And then lastly, uh, Terra Incognito is now available, or Terra Incognita is now available on Steam. Uh, we have All no right. new dates and no deals of the day for you. Uh, Kevin, did you find uh, the Arkanoid breakout I, game? I'm having some trouble. You want to? Here, let me show you. Like, which one? Like, this. Mm. none of this seems right, right? It might be mis- it might be misspelled on the doc. It might be with a K. Because, like, actually, how did you spell it in the thing? I can't, I can't see clearly. I mean, I it's copied all... and pasted what you wrote and then put switch afterwards. Hmm. Try changing the C to a K and see what happens. Also, I think what you have brought up on the screen is like very blurry, even on Twitch. No, it's just blurry when it goes to you. Oh, oh, you know what? I think I have it on like three hundred or three sixty p on my Twitch. Um, yeah, uh, yeah none of this is working. Is. Uh, is there? Can I like? Does Nintendo have a website where they show this shit? Probably, no. but it's probably not even worth figuring out. If it I'm really honest. isn't. This is uh, a dumb it thing sounds like it's just an Arkanoid game. Which, if that's the case, that's really cool. I love Arkanoid. Arkanoid. One of my earliest memories in gaming. We had Arkanoid on the PC, and like we like my my I, I wasn't never really like a PC gamer growing up, but for some reason my dad, who never games, my dad was really into Arkanoid and very good at it, and so we had it on our <laughs> PC, and so we would I would go to the, like the family PC because it was in our study room or whatever. I would go there and just play Arkanoid all the time, uh, and it was a very good time. Very much loved Arkanoid. Of course, if you're watching the show, if you're a patron, you can go to patreon.com. It's kind of funny games to get your question read on the show, just like Jake Bogdanoff did, or Jake Bogdanoff did. Uh, Jake wrote in and says, what do you guys want in a Switch Pro? Uh, Beyond Breath of the Wild 2 running well and looking beautiful, I'm not sure what I want it to be. I've got my PS5, so I don't need parity. Tim, what do you want from a Switch Pro? I want, you know, bigger screen, bigger buttons. That's the thing that I want the most that I don't think I'm going to get. I'm a fan of like DualShock style can buttons on the face buttons, right? The big mm-hmm. thumb sized ones. I, that's why I, I always prefer the PSP over the Vita. And the Switch has these tiny little baby buttons. And the, the Switch Pro Controller, beautiful, large face buttons. Let me get some of that, man. I don't care if this thing is big and bulky. Like, that's what the whole point is for me for this, is I want it to be the premium experience of being able to to play this thing handheld. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily know what I want. I'm in the place where I want Nintendo to tell me what I need. Like I, I'm good with what the switch is currently, you know, like I, I'm, I'm, I'm in a similar boat of, of, I would like bigger buttons, but for the most part, I play on my TV or on my monitor, which means that I'm going to play with my pro controller. And so that's not the hugest issue for me. Uh, I do like the idea of it being a home console and it being this accompaniment to your original Switch, which is this this handheld play on the go thing. Because well, I think and that, the Switch Lite. And the Switch Lite, which is yeah. really that. Yeah, and that could make for a good spectrum of a family of like the Switch Lite being the most portable, right? Not being able to connect to your TV, regular Switch being a hybrid, and then maybe a version of a Switch Pro that is, hey, this is a home console. It supports 4K. It supports uh, uh, better running games. You know, you fi- you can finally run through the Lost Woods in Zelda without it chugging super hard. Uh, I think that'd be cool for me. Like with that, I'm I. There's not really much there for the Switch that I need them to fix or figure out, aside from things like online and Joy-Con drift and like things that are like hiccups and 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 things are actually broken as opposed to like step steps forward or innovations that I need from it. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. I use my Switch actually about 50-50, whether it's handheld or uh, docked. So you bring up an interesting point of like, I do guess I have the desire to have a stronger, more 4K one that is the home version, since we do have the light version. But I, I want a pro handheld as well. Mm-hmm. So Because I use my light all the time as a handheld. Like I have my Switch down here mainly docked, and then I have the light next to my bed so i can just pop it and play by the way i'm having a weird issue with my light if anyone knows how to fix it where only like four games are showing up uh on my home screen and then the rest are just blank squares including the more games option like the games library i just can't get to it so right now i can only play 
NES Online, SNES Online, Hades, and Smash Brothers, which isn't I the mean, worst yeah, thing. I was going to say, what more good. do you need? <laughs> it but like it's uh, definitely something I need fixed. I actually initialized the whole system and, and tried reconfiguring it, and it just isn't working. So I don't know what's wrong there. But uh, if you have any ideas, let me know. But I'm very excited about a Switch Pro. I, I'm having I'm a similar day problem. One. I'm having a similar problem, not on my Switch, on my PS5. It's not as bad as yours, but I downloaded Brawlhalla just to play one time with a friend, uh, just because it was like a dumb thing to do. We're like, oh, what game can we play? Brawlhalla is free. Let's fuck around in Brawlhalla. Downloaded it, played it once, and then deleted it. But the icon is still there on my home screen, even though I deleted it. And it is like, it is a blank icon. And it is the first thing that pops up every it's single weird. time. It's weird. Yeah. And I don't know how to get rid of it. Like, every, if I press options on it, it just pops up with the with like a couple of options to like see game details and stuff like that it's like not delete not play it's nothing it's just a blank icon yeah. and i don't want to like do the thing where i rebuild my database because last time i did that that then caused issues and this is where we're at new consoles this is where we're at problems. man yeah new, new consoles, consoles new, new problems, problems. <laughs> <laughs> now it's time to squad up of course that's where you write in let us know what you're playing so we can squad you up with the community uh brandon writes in with a squad up on playstation and says hey kind of funny family I need help in Destiny 2. I'm a returning guardian who needs help in the latest Destiny quest in raids, trying to catch up on my backlog of PlayStation games. So if anyone can help, that would be greatly appreciated. Hope to see you soon. Remember, eyes up, guardian. If you want to play with Brandon, you can add them on PlayStation with the username GrimReaper91352. That is Grim Reaper, spelled how you think it's spelled, 91352. Now it's time for kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong, where you write in the list of what we got wrong as we got it wrong. Uh, Banners writes in, and like with breaking news that I wouldn't necessarily include in the show, but it's a fun thing to shout out. A uh, friend of the show, Rebecca Valentine, has joined IGN's news reporting team. Congratulations, yeah. Rebecca so Valentine. Cool. Very talented, uh, the homie. Very happy about that. Good for you, Rebecca. Uh, let's see what else here. Uh, Dale Bodge just points out that Emron was scheduled for today, which that is true. He was scheduled. And so I understand why you would say hi to Emron. And also, I, like, I don't you know, know, I don't know why he hi. was scheduled, though. That's the weirdest thing. Doesn't maybe, matter. Maybe we like Emron. We want to see him more than we want to see you, you know? I mean, I understand that, but I need to go back and see who changed that shit but on like, the, the calendar. This is a conspiracy. Still, like, no reason not to include me in the hay. Like, I'm here, you know? Well, about I that, have, Kevin, I have Bodge writes in. Mount Nanny Bosch does, does write in again, and you're wrong, and says, Bless, you added a hide to Kevin for me. I'm holding a grudge against him after he destroyed me in Among Us, uh, and so that's Dude, why he didn't say hi. I me. fucking trashed that poor little bastard. I trashed him hard. He, like, came, like three times in a row, I was like, yeah, he's it, and he was it, and we won the game so quickly. It was, it was very sad. I'm that's sorry, always Nana. a fun thing when you can when you can uh, point out the imposter immediately. Mm -hmm. I was playing I was playing uh, over the weekend with some friends, <laughs> and I had the thing where I had figured out who the imposters were at the very last round. It was already too late, and like you know, it was one of those things where I was like, I think it's I think it's X and Y person, and then voting had already done, and then like we went into the next round, and I was like, well, if I'm right, then we're done because they just got to kill one more person, and sure mm -hmm. enough, it was them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always the worst feeling. Mm -hmm. Uh. DH Ruminator writes in with uh, missed news that came out during the show. Uh, LG TVs are getting Stadia and GeForce Now built in. And so, this is the beginning. It's all going to happen. Game Pass, baby. <laughs> and then this is one more. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm, I'll count it as missed news. I saw it and I did include it because it was one of those ones, ones where I was like, I don't know if this is big enough for a news story, but it is a fun one. Uh, Kabobs writes in. Uh, it mentions that uh, game devs or a game dev uh, is letting people play Pokemon in his avatar on Twitter by commenting Game Boy commands uh, in, in his tweets. And so it works just like Twitch plays Pokemon. Um, if you want to read more about it, there's a story on Kotaku, uh, but it's a pretty fun thing. There you go. It's kind of funny.com slash go wrong. Uh, this week's host for the show look like this. On Tuesday, tomorrow, it's me and Imran. Wednesday is Greg and Gary. Thursday is Greg and Tim. And then Friday, it's Greg and Carolyn Petit. If you're watching cool. this live on Twitch, after this is Andy, Nick, and Stobak Mike playing Warzone. Of course, this has been Kind of Funny Games Daily, each and every day live right here on twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games. We run you through the nerdy news you need to know about. We have a Patreon post show for those that are subbed at the silver level of patreon.com slash Kind of Funny Games. So stick around for that. Otherwise, until next time, game daily. <laughs>